Let's talk with Virgil in Portland, Oregon. Hey, Virgil. Hi there, Mike. Um, I wanted to go ahead and try and uh, get on the topic of uh, the gun violence. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just I'm just raging and rambling here. It doesn't mean a thing. Well, let's see if I can dovetail it. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk to you about an article that was pu published on Rock Paper Shotgun by one of the guys who worked on a video game called Dishonored, uh, one of the ultra violent video games that a lot of people are pointing to and saying, "See, see, there." Mm -hmm. Look at all the violence, look at all the decadence, look at all the brutality, see what it's teaching people. Mm -hmm. And of course, this guy's just a developer. He stood up and he tried to talk about it. And of course, without getting into the nitty gritty, I wanted to merely say, his game features violence. But it also features subterfuge. It features uh, interpersonal communications to grill people for knowledge and information in the effort to hunt down people who have uh, slandered your name which is an oversimplification, but uh, follow me down this road real quick. There's a section in the game where you have to infiltrate a party because one of these guys who's done you wrong is in here partying. You don't know what he looks like or where he is. And you got to get in there some way. Well, you could impersonate a guest. You could infiltrate the thing outright, steal your way into the party. Mm -hmm. You could impersonate one of the people working on there. There's about six different ways to get inside. But the developer talks about a specific case when they were testing the game of one dude that started the whole thing off by shooting the first guard he saw in the face. And then he ran through the rest of the party, and I'll just be brief on this subject, but he butchered everyone, civilians, uh, he destroyed property, set the place ablaze, just absolutely tore it all up. Mm -hmm. And he did this of his own accord. You can win the game this way. It's possible. But it's really kind of silly, all the work and effort put into these sidelines to try and give it some complexity, give it something more than just random, uh, vitriolic ugliness. And he says in the subject, I think the key to my uneasiness, uh, speaking about watching this occur, is the context of choice here. In this mission, more than in any other, the player is not only given alternatives to bloodshed, but alternatives that seem better, better options in every way. Sparing lives in this level is more fun. It creates more gameplay. It's harder to do. And yet to the player is choosing, the player now, above all other options, to kill everybody anyway. And in this light, that string of worm-like, grim-faced civilian murder is as intentional as is possible, and to me a disquieting conclusion. The thing is, is that, yes, you can, with a video game, experience fantasies of extraordinary ugliness. You can go the full range. You can be a saint. You can be a sinner. You can do anything with it, just like any other piece. But if you are the kind of person who seeks this thrill, this desire to slaughter and destroy, maybe that's uh, maybe that's a problem with you and not necessarily the game material. Wouldn't you pause it for a moment? Well, I, you know, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And as somebody in the chat room just pointed out, I've, I've read this before a long time ago, but there are certain uh, uh, behavioral psychologists whose names I cannot recall who have published reports that say um, in their opinion using these sometimes using these violent video games act as a, uh, uh, a a means of draining whatever sort of violence exists in these teenage boys and these young adult headed uh, men it drains it off so they are less likely to commit acts uh, that they would find in these video games now I don't know if that's true or not but I can remember reading it in a respectable journal someplace sometime uh, and that was uh, that idea was put out there that you know the games don't cause violence in fact the games can uh, uh, drain off the violent impulses so I don't know if that's true or not but but focusing on video games and movies is a bunch of bat crap the you know you you can't take uh, a, a DVD and go kill 26 people you've got to have a weapon to do that so I uh, I hear you loud and clear thanks a lot Virgil no problem. All right, I appreciate what you had to say. Yeah, th this idea, uh, you know, I, I don't play video games. I don't like video games. I do not allow, a mo well, I, I take that back. Molly is allowed to play certain kid video games only a minute-for-minute minute match with her piano practice. If she practices for 30 minutes on the piano, she gets 30 minutes of kid video games. Uh, and mostly what she does is, uh, what is it now, Mario Brothers? The Mar Brothers? It was called Mario Brothers 30 years ago. Super Mario. Uh, well, let's call that 25 years ago. But anyway, uh, we do let her play a few of the kid games. And I don't know why, except 
we do. But the only way she gets to play is to match it minute for minute with piano practice. I don't know anything about these games. Some of them look really intriguing and like they would be great fun. Maybe I should start playing them so I would stop screaming and talking foul-mouthed on this program. I said I know.